Hello Ashlings, welcome back to the Phoenix Nest. Sorry for the long delay between my last video and this one. This holiday was insane for me, and I worked like crazy and had many family commitments, as well as losing my job at the end of the month for health reasons. I just got over being sick and now have a lot of extra time to work on videos, so expect many more in the upcoming weeks as we get closer to Alpha 1. Today I have a guest Raven from the Ashes Discord. Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, podcast. Today we'd like to go over a few pieces of drama within the community and talk about what things can be improved on as well as talk about why the game's timeline may not be as impossible as you may think because of how versatile the Unreal Engine 4 can be. A lot of comments on videos on major media outlets and on Discord are commenting on how the MMO is now a BR. I'd like to disagree with this sentiment and here's why I still have faith in the project. First off. We heard about the BR and the reasons for them using the APOC testing as a way to test the backend systems way back at PAX West. While attending, I was able to speak to all the major developers of Intrepid in person and was given more detailed reasoning than they had given to the community in podcasts, news posts, and other media. Raven, what's your views on this? Why a, a BR? Well, a BR is something very simple to create. All they really did was um, grab a chunk out of the map that they've already uh, created, uh, put it into a separate level, put on all the assets and everything like that, and test the servers against that map. And having tested the uh, servers against the map, worry about capacity, how many people can you physically put on a map before other stress issues are shown? This is all part and parcel of how they're going to step it up to the castle sieges and the horde mode. They need to make sure that those servers can handle the amount of people that they actually want to have in those servers. I think the lack of proper communication is the biggest reason why this sentiment is so widespread and Intrepid definitely needs to improve on this. Hopefully with the hiring of the new community marketing lead, Margaret Crone, we can get some better and more concise information permeated into the community. But anyway, when I spoke to the devs at PAX, none of them were as enthusiastic about the BR as much as they were when speaking about the MMO. Their passion was for the MMO, not for the BR. Jeffrey Bard spoke about the BR as a means to an end, not as their new focus. What about you, Raven? What do you think about the whole Ashes is pulling a Fortnite argument? Well, the BR and Fortnite, well, it's very childish, really. Um, we already know what uh, Intrepid want to do with the BR. But they're doing it. It's a, it's a means to an end for testing. That's really all it is. Um, the MMO part of it, it's there in the background. They're still working on it. And like I said, you don't need a hundred developers working on the BR uh, to fix servers and all that. Uh, in the background, they're all there creating assets and working on the MMO. Exactly. As they previously stated, only about seven developers were working on the BR mode. Next, let's quickly go over the controversy about the monetization of the APOC game modes. The argument is that Intrepid monetizing the BR is cause for concern as they are pulling a cash grab for a mode originally meant for testing. Now they are getting pulled into trying to cash in on the Battle Royale trend. In my opinion, their reasons for using that money from cosmetics and the legendary path to pay to keep the servers up 24-7 is justified. For one, they needed to test out their cosmetic cash shop since that's a big part of their subscription only cosmetic cash shop no pay to win monetization plan. And anything involving money needs to function correctly as early as possible since money is involved and that creates a whole other set of issues. And two, the whole reason they are keeping APOC up 24-7 in the future is to keep less invested players content while the MMO is being developed. I do however think the prices of the cosmetics were too high and the legendary path does give off vibes of pay to convenience but that may not have been their original intention. So maybe with the feedback we can give, they can change that business model to suit the original plan of a cosmetic cash shop with both no pay to win and no pay for convenience. Raven, what's your opinion on this? Well, my opinion is it's a sub game. Why do we need a cash shop for cosmetics? 
if the items that are sold in the cash shop are found in the game which means that people do not have to use the cash shop i'm quite fine with that well they have stated previously that many of the cosmetics available in the cash shop will have a similar variant achievable in game, but only with proper criticism and feedback will they realize they may have gone a step too far this time. Now Raven was brought on because he has a lot of experience with Unreal Engine 4, as he's been personally working with it as a hobby since 2014, and has been working on 3D modeling in general since 2012. So I'm going to ask a few questions about the capabilities of the engine and its potential effects on the game. With the issues we saw in the APOC BR mode with over 80 players causing optimization issues, what methods can Intrepid use to optimize large-scale PvP battles? Um, that's culling. Um, basically, what culling means is when players are all in one spot, the server needs to send out information to every PC that where the players are and when they move, the information gets sent out again. And this is what causes lag and a lot of other issues. But when I uh, went into the VR for the first time, I had a frame rate between 50 and 89. Um, I did some uh, slight adjustments to the settings, and then I got a frame rate of 100 to 120, which was more acceptable. How much time do you think they may save in comparison to developing their own engine? Unreal 4 comes as a complete package. They have a lot of utilities in, inside the, uh, the actual package. And for them to do somewhere even close to that, it will take them at least two years of just solid programming and testing and programming and testing. So it was not a viable uh, solution for them. With Intrepid's transparency policy, do you think they aren't showing enough? Do you think other gaming companies show you all their stuff that they're making? The answer is no. They will release things as they see fit. Do you think if they say they're on time still, they're being honest? Or do you think it's more likely a PR move of trying to keep faith in the product? Yes, they are on time as they are working on the MMO as we speak. Just because they have issues with the servers at the moment, it just means a group is working on these issues. The rest are working on the MMO. I agree, and I think they have a better idea how far along they are, and we aren't seeing the full picture of what they have behind the scenes. We are not privy to all that's behind the scenes. This is to stop their competitors seeing what they are doing and maybe quickly adding that feature in, into their games. And yeah, that's part of the double-edged sword of being a very transparent studio because they have to worry constantly about getting their ideas stolen. In my opinion, as someone who's followed the game since day one, they've gone leaps and bounds ahead of my expectations for the small amount of development time they've put in thus far. There are definitely many things they need to work on, but overall I expect things to speed up around the time of A1, which is in quarter two of this year, and that people should hold off on pulling out their torches and pitchforks until they've seen the progress they've made on the MMO they promised they've been working on this whole time. Now if A1 comes around and it's just the BR map with quests and mobs in it, I think that would be a call for concern, but for now it's too early to tell and people should be happy they have a free to play game in the form of APOC as a way to tide them over until launch. I agree with that. Well that's about all we have for today, thanks for being on my video Raven. Thanks for having me, bye all. I hope you all learned something or if you have other concerns, feel free to leave a comment down below and we can continue the conversation down there. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch, at PhoenixZeke, to keep an eye on the APOC testing as well as A1 when that starts. Next video, I'll be back to my Theorycraft and Speculation series, this time on The Mage, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, I'll see you when you return to the nest.